It's got a case only a mother could love, with design cues from a Tupperware container. But the Minis Forum TH50 is a decent mini PC for the low price, thanks to the inclusion of Thunderbolt 4 and dual LAN ports. This mini uses a last generation Intel Core i5 11320H, which is only 4 cores and 8 threads. Yep, quad core in 2022. It features Intel Xe graphics, 16GB of non-upgradable inbuilt memory, which I'm not a fan of, but at least it's a good amount and running at 3200MHz. There's no bare bones unit available, so the option is a 256 or 512GB NVMe for storage included with your purchase option. There's also space for dual 2.5 inch SATA drives to allow plenty of extra storage possibilities. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are included. In the box, you have the Tupperware container, manual, figure 8 power cable, HDMI cable, SATA mounting kit, a 65 watt power supply, and a monitor mount. On the front of the Mini is your mic and audio jack, dual USB 3 and the Thunderbolt 4 port, which should have been on the back in my opinion. Anyway, on the rear is dual USB 2, dual USB 3, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, DisplayPort, and HDMI. So a total of three monitors if you're using Thunderbolt as well. There's a USB-C port for powering the unit. You'll also find a clear CMOS button on the side. I love a good BIOS as much as any one man can, but this is one of the most bare bones I've seen in a while. There's nothing of interest or to tinker with, so there's nothing to reset. But don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Or whatever. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, but I'm going to open up the TH50 and install a 2.5 inch SATA drive. We start by unscrewing this cheap looking and feeling plastic bottom. Solid, it is not. Anyway, let's have a look what brand NVMe you get. It's a budget VIC drive, but good to see a heatsink on it. Alright, so you connect your SATA cable to the drive and then place it in the tray. If you don't have a second one to add, screw on the mounting plate. Then attach the other end of the SATA cable to the board. Attaching it is definitely flimsy. With that finished, put it all back together. It's benchmark time. The Mini's Forum UM560 I reviewed recently is close in price to the TH50. It's much smaller with an AMD Ryzen CPU, so I thought I'd compare the units. In Cinebench single core, Intel comes out ahead by just over 1.5%. In multi-core, the 4-core struggles against the 6-core Ryzen, with a TH50 falling behind by 16.5%. This also shows in a real-world benchmark, such as encoding a video. The TH50 is behind by 13%. Intel 3D Mark scores can be taken with a grain of salt, but apparently there's almost a 37% better score in DirectX 11 and 42% in DirectX 12. I'll compare the two side by side in actual games shortly. But first, let's see how the TH50 handles an esports title like Valorant. It mostly stays above 100 FPS, occasionally dropping to the mid 90s. Pretty good for a 144Hz experience. Ok, now the gaming comparisons. In Forza Horizon 5, the TH50 has a very similar frame rate to the UM560. It certainly isn't almost 40% faster. Not even a scratch. The jungle awaits. Hades is a game where the TH50 does see a performance boost. It sticks much closer to the 144 FPS target. For Doom Eternal, the result flips, with the TH50 getting spanked by the UM560. Come on Intel, get your Vulcan act together. In God of War, the TH50 does better with a 20% higher frame rate in some cases, but the quad core hits 100% in some areas. Anyway, I'll give the win to the TH50. So that's two wins, a loss, and a draw. I guess the iGPU is a bit faster in this, based on those four games. It also does better in PS3 emulation, when it actually manages to play them. It'll often crash the emulator during shader compilation. I did finally manage to play a few, so I'm including them. Wipeout Fury is a decent experience on the TH50. 
Infamous doesn't get you the greatest frame rate, but it was playable. Definitely can't say that about Motorstorm though. Graphical glitches are a bonus extra. Wii U emulation is pretty good. Tick and tag is a locked 60 FPS. As is Splatoon. Breath of the Wild is a mid 30 FPS experience. Okay, so overall the TH50 should be better than the UM560 at emulation. Maximum temperature reached was 87C at full CPU load. This did trigger thermal throttling, but most of the time the CPU did stay below that as seen in the game tests. Overall, it's not very loud when gaming, but there is some fan ramping up and down during certain scenarios, which I found pretty annoying. Overall, the UM560 is quieter and also uses less power than the TH50. So, the Minis Forum TH50 is fine. The most compelling reason to get it is for the Thunderbolt 4 and dual 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, if that's what you're looking for. But keep in mind, it does have a 4 core 11th gen Intel CPU, and we're soon heading up to 13th gen with plenty of cores. That being said, the low price with memory and storage included also makes it a decent deal. The TH50 didn't impress me, but it's okay. Just aesthetically challenged. Are you interested in the Minis Forum TH50? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more ugly mini PC reviews in the future. Cheers!